Okay, hey guys, welcome back to Eleven Les- uh, Lessons Online. Alright, uh, hope you're doing a uh, you're you're doing fine. Okay, hope you're having a good day. Alright, we're gonna be moving on to our first question. Okay, on statistics for our 2017 A levels, uh, paper two. Alright, so we're just gonna be looking at question five. We're gonna be doing a bit of discrete random variable probability as well as binomial distribution in this question. Alright, quite an interesting question, quite fun to do. So you can grab your notebook, grab your pen, grab your pillow, grab where you need to grab, and then just sit back and enjoy this video. Alright, so a bag contains six red counters and three yellow counters. Highlight those. Alright, so in a game, Lee removes counters at random. Okay, from the back one at a time until he has taken out two eight counters, right? So over here it states that there is, I mean, it is, in, it is implied, okay, that there is no replacement at all. Alright, so the total number of counters that Lee removes on the back is denoted by t. Okay, so find the probability of t equals to small t for all possible values of small t. Um, part 2 is find the expectant of t and the variance of t. The last one is when he has played it 15 times, find the probability that he has to take at least four counters of the back in at least five of his 15 games, all right? So part one is actually quite simple. Um, you're just gonna find the probability for basically um, the number of counters that he takes out until, until he has two red counters, all right? So if you always need, you can always draw this out. So we have got red, 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 red. So we've got six counters of red over here. And then we've got three yellow. Okay, so you can just and I'll draw out just a, a quick diagram. Okay, so the first case okay, would be when I take out both my red counters on the first try. Right, very, very fortunate to do this. So I will have t equals to 2. Uh, this is when I get my red counter plus my red counter. So this would just be very simply 6 over 9. And then after this, because I've taken out one red counter, I will only be left with 5 red counters. So I minus 1. And because I've taken out that red counter, the total is also reduced by 1. I only have 8 left. So this would give me a total of 5 over 12. Okay, the next case is when I take out 3 counters. Okay, reason being is because I said I take out a red counter. And then I somehow take out a yellow counter instead. So I don't get my red counter. But on my last try, I get my red counter again. So this would be the same thing. It would be 6 over 9. And then now because I've taken out my yellow counter, okay, I'm, I'll take out one of the three and I'll divide it by how many that there is left in the bag, which is only eight, okay, because I've taken out one red counter. And because the thing is that I can take out my red followed by my yellow, or I can take out my yellow followed by my red, I will have to take this and multiply it by a um, two factorial, okay, because of my permutations, right? Um, so you will have to um, factor in the two cases, okay, whereby one of them is when you take out the red first, then the yellow, then you take out the yellow first, then the red. All right, and then after this, I would then multiply it by 5 over 7, okay, because I've already taken out two counters. This would give me a nice number of 5 over 14, all right, it's not very nice, okay. All right, so next case is when I take out four counters, okay, reason being... I take out one of my red counters, for instance and take out a yellow and unfortunately I take out another yellow okay before finally taking out my red so I've taken out four counters in this case before I got my two reds so my first red counter would be six over nine and then I will multiply it by three over eight for one of my yellow counters and then two over seven because I took out one yellow counter already and then I'll have to take this and multiply it by the different number of cases which can occur in this case I have got three different cases I can take out um, red followed by yellow yellow or I can take out yellow, red, yellow, or I can take out another yellow, red, yellow, or yellow, yellow, red. Okay, and it sounds like four cases. Okay, reason being is because um, there's actually one case that repeats, right? Because the yellow counters, um, they repeat, so you have to divide it by the two factorial. Okay, so there will be three different permutations over here, which is three factorial. Okay, and because two of them are identical, we divide it by two factorial. Okay, and then finally, my last red counter, which should be 5 over 6. This would give me 5 over 28. So my last case, which is going to be P, when T equals to 5, would be when I have a red counter followed by a yellow counter and another yellow counter and another yellow counter followed by my last red counter. So this is when I've used up all my yellow counters. So I have 6 over 9 times 3 over 8 times 2 over 7. Alright, and this is where um, it gets interesting. Okay, the last yellow counter will be my last one, so it will be 1 
over the last minus one again, six. And then now I have got four different um, possible um, scenarios over here. So what I'll do is I'll multiply it by four factorial and I'll divide it by the three identical counters, which are the three yellows, okay, because of the three different ways they can be reshuffled. So I'll take it divided by three factorial and lastly, my for my final rate counter, I'll be left with only five rate counters left and only five um, total counters in the back. So this will give me 1 over 21. And that is all, alright? So these are going to be my four main answers um, for all possible values of t. Okay, and then the next part, part 2. Okay, so part 2 is actually asking you for the expectant of uh, t and the variance of t. So this one is basically a discrete random variable. So what we can do is you can just draw a quick um, kind of like diagram sort of. Okay, on your discrete random variable. So I will have on top t, bottom I'll have p, the probability of t, the number of counters. So I will have 2, 3, 4, and 5. So I've already found the probability, which is going to be 5 over 12, 5 over 14, 5 over 28, and 1 over 21 as above, right? So this part we have learned um, before in our stats, okay, the expectant of t is very simply just the sum of your t, okay, your, your, your small t multiplied okay, by its probability. Okay, so basically this one is very simple. It'll just be 2 times 5 over 12 plus 3 times 5 over 14 plus 4 times 5 over 28 and lastly plus 5 times 1 over 21 so add this all together you'll get a value of 20 over 7 okay then now in order to find the variance of t okay we have learned that the variance of t is equivalent to e expectant e t square minus the square of your expectant. Okay, so in this case, um, what can we do? Okay. Okay, so what we can do here is we can first find, um, what on earth your your e t square is, correct? So in order to find what your e t square is, you will have to first, um, go and work it out one by one. Okay, so give me one second. Okay, yes. Alright, okay, so this part is actually quite simple. So, so we're just going to square the t value. So when we're squaring the t value, all you need to do is just take e, sorry, e big t square will just give you your sum of t square times the probability of your t, which will give you 2 square times 5 over 12 plus 3 square times 5 over 14 plus 4 square times 5 over 28 and lastly 5 square times 1 over 21. All right, this will give you a nice value of 1, 2, 5 over 14. All right, so now you can find what your variance is. So the variance of t would just be 1, 2, 5 over 14 minus 20 over 7 whole thing square. Get 75 over 98. Alright, so this is your answer for this part on the variance of t as well as the, uh, the mean value, okay, your expectant of t. Okay, then the uh, last part, part 3. Okay, part 3 is uh, going to be an uh, interesting question. Okay, so the question is asking you, uh, find a probability that Lee has to take at least 4 counters out of the bat in at least 5 of his 15 games. Alright, so this one, um, he has to take out at least 4, which means that the probability of T has to be at least equivalent to or more than 4. Okay, and this value we know, okay, because we're only left from um, T equals to 4 and T equals to 5, will very simply be T equals to 4 plus the probability that t is equivalent to 5. So all you need to do is just add up these two probabilities. You get 5 over 28 
plus 1 over 21, you will get 19 over 84. So the next part is a binomial distribution, okay, because they give us the total number of um, trials, okay, uh, which is denoted as your 15, okay, and, the, and we also have the probability, okay, that he takes out at least four counters. So what you're going to do is you're going to let x be the number of times that at least four counters are taken out from the back the back for the 15 times that he tries Lee tries okay and you have a very nice binomial distribution looking like this so by x would be b the number of trials which in this case is 15 and the probability that you have just found 19 over 84 all right so the question is asking you out the for at least five tries so that means x has to be more than equals to five but as we have learned right by norm it can never be more than it has to be less than so what we'll take is we'll take one minus p when x is less than or equals to four tries okay which means that four is included but five is not included okay because they're asking you for the question they're asking you when five is included as well so we cannot include five which means that it has to be less than or equals to four so press this into your calculator by norm um, and then you would get a very simple answer of 0 0.238 so this would be your answer for this question all right so just take one um, which is the probability of the whole thing minus the probability that x is four or less than or equals to four and then you'll be able to find the number of the probability of the um when x is more than or equals to 5. All right, so that's all for this question. I think it's quite a okay question, quite doable. Um, you just need to be very careful of the first part when you are factoring into account that the counters are identical. Okay, that you need to permutate them and divide them by its factorial as well. Okay, to shuffle them around. Um, if not, uh, that is actually all I have for this video. All right, if you did enjoy it, be sure to give it a like as well as to subscribe to the channel. It really does help me out a lot. It's free. Um, as well as to leave any questions you have in the comment section below and I will answer them. All right, so if not, I'll see you guys in the next one. Till then, have a good one. Bye-bye.